the very first hospitals in human history that incorporated mental health or psychiatric institutions were within the hospitals of the Muslims. What do you know about psychology? And do you think Islam has anything to do with it? One Park Network sat down with one of the world's leading Muslim professionals in the field of psychology. Her name is Dr. Rania Awad. She's a clinical associate professor of psychiatry at Stanford University and is also the director of Stanford's new Muslim Mental Health and Islamic Psychology Lab. She's making breakthrough discoveries, unearthing the lost legacy of Islam, rewriting the history of psychology all together as we speak. Here's the story that you need to hear. When I first discovered Islamic psychology, I was looking through the books of the early great scholars who had written about psychology in search for what it is that they understood about mental illness. I was looking through the books of physicians, early Muslim physicians, to see what did they say. And I came across a book from the 9th century by Abu Zayd al-Balkhi called Masalih al-Abdani wal-Anfus. Today, part of that book is translated the second half under the title Sustenance of the Soul. Al-Balkhi is from the 9th century, and he took great lengths to write about physical medical illnesses and then also mental illnesses in the second half of his book. And as I was reading this book, I looked at the different chapters, and one of the chapters really caught my attention. Today, as a trained psychiatrist, as reading this, I thought to myself, this looked like obsessive compulsive disorder or OCD. Down the hall from me, where I was training at Stanford University, was one of the main important people in the field of OCD. Somebody had written the main textbooks on this very topic. And so I went down the hall, knocked on his door, and said, I think I found something here about OCD from much, much earlier than we study in our field of psychology. In the field of psychology, the illness called OCD is often written about as a modern disorder, something that was not discovered until the 19th century. Or its very early case description, but not fully fleshed out, was written about in the 16th century. But here I was reading something in the 9th century that looked very much like OCD. And when I said this to my professor, he said, no, 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 it can't be. We've written everything there is to write about OCD. And I said to him, but can you read in Arabic? He said, no, <laughs> can you? And I said, yes. And he said, well, then go translate it and come back. And I did. I took up the challenge, translated that section of al balkhis book. And something that was so interesting is as I was writing the different uh, classification and diagnosis of that particular illness, it reminded me so much of the way it was written about in the DSM, which is the manual that psychiatrists or psychologists diagnose from. And I did a comparison between the DSM-5 and between al balkhis criteria for obsessions. And side by side, you could see he got every single point correct. I took this back to our professor and he was ecstatic, so happy. Not for the Muslim excitement of, wow, an early Muslim scholar figured this out. In his case, for the scientific advancement of understanding the trans-historical benefit of knowing that this constellation of symptoms existed back much, much earlier than we expected. And he actually advised to publish this. And alhamdulillah, the paper has now been published. You can find it in the Journal of Affective Disorders, in which we talk about how Balkhi is likely one of the first in history to understand, classify, diagnose, and treat obsessive compulsive disorder. And similar papers like this in the Journal of Affective Disorders and Journal of Anxiety Disorders and the like, in which we were able to show how some of the early Muslim scholars were really at the forefront of the mental health field and really understood this and worked towards its treatment and its benefit.